Unless you live under a rock, you probably noticed the massive AWS outage yesterday, which took down half the internet. It affected everything from Canva and Asana, for those of you who are employed, to Netflix and Roblox for the average CS major out there. But this isn't new. AWS regions, especially US East 1, have gone down before and they will go down again. So here's the question. Why do companies still keep building their entire service and infrastructure on one region? Let's start off with how every single one of these companies could have designed around this. The standard architecture for dealing with a single region failure on AWS is called a multi-region architecture, and AWS explicitly recommends this in their own best practices. However, most teams are actually comfortable relying on the promises Amazon makes. Things like 99.99% uptime for top tier services, and even a 100% availability guarantee for Route 53. They assume that if AWS itself can go down for an hour a year, the same tolerance will be acceptable for their own customers. So let's talk about the design pattern that's actually built for outages. At a high level, the design is simple. Instead of running everything in a single AWS region, you deploy to two or more, let's say US East 1 and US West 2, and route users to whichever region is healthy. Usually, that's handled by Route 53, AWS's DNS-level routing service. You can configure it for latency-based routing, failover routing, or even geolocation-based routing. So if US East 1 goes down, Route 53 should automatically shift traffic over to US West 2. This is pretty elegant and it's usually pretty reliable, but in this outage even that wasn't enough because the control plane for Route 53 itself, the part responsible for orchestrating these failures, lives primarily in US East 1, which means that when that region failed, even the failover failed. So what do you do when even AWS's recommended architecture doesn't work? Well, the answer is you have to go multi-cloud or hybrid on-prem. Designs where you can fail over not just onto another AWS region, but to another provider altogether, or even to your own hardware. This is what things like banks, airlines, and government systems do. They can't afford to go down and their entire business depends on never showing an error on a user's page. But before you go over to GCP to create an account, let's take a look at what that actually costs. Let's say your company is making $100 million dollars a year in revenue. You're fully cloud-based, revenue is steady, and every second of uptime matters because users are consistently hitting your API. If AWS goes down for five hours once a year, pretty realistic number, that's about $57,000 per hour, or roughly $285,000 in total lost transactions. Then we also have to factor in the hidden cost, which is reputation damage, angry customers, refund requests, and bad press, maybe another $700,000 in long-term impact. Altogether, that's around $1 million in total losses from a single outage. Painful, sure, but it's not catastrophic, especially when you compare it to the price tag of building a system that never goes down. So let's compare that million dollar outage to what it actually costs to avoid this outage. Option one, we deploy to a second AWS region, let's say US West 2 in an active passive setup. Now, we're not doubling our infrastructure costs here because we're not running full traffic in both regions 24 seven. On a pay as you go model, like we have with AWS, we might only increase costs by 20 to 30% to keep the bare minimum infrastructure warm. But now we're adding a lot of complexity. We have to handle replications between regions, regionalized networking and latency tuning, cross region observability so we can actually debug when things go wrong, and roughly 20 to 30% in extra DevOps time to keep the whole thing healthy. It's manageable, but it's still pretty expensive just to prevent the million dollar loss that may or may not happen. Option two, go multi-cloud. Now this is a whole different beast and my personal developer hell. Suddenly we're juggling two different ecosystems. Now, we now have to worry about IAM, VPCs, networking, and SDKs, all with their own quirks across two completely different platforms. We're rewriting our CI CD pipelines, we're duplicating secrets, and we're retraining engineers who now have to be fluent in both AWS and GCP or Azure. This is probably going to be two to three times our current cost, plus a noticeable hit to iteration speed, because now every feature needs to work on both clouds. Option three, go hybrid with on-prem architecture. Now we're buying servers, racks, networking gear. We need physical redundancy, power backups, cooling systems and a team to maintain it all. That's millions in capital expenditure before your first request even hits that equipment. So when you stack it all up, a million dollar outage once a year versus five to 10 million just to prevent it, it's pretty clear. For companies where velocity is king and a few hours of downtime is survivable, that outage starts to look like a pretty cheap trade-off to make. And that's why 99% of companies don't invest in any of this. If you want to learn more about practical applied system design, you'll love everything I have here on YouTube. And if you want to hear written word from me, you can check out my newsletter down below. See you guys next time.